Um, units. Units are really, really, really important. So here's, here's a sentence. When my son was seven, he walked three, and when he was four, he threw his baseball eight and said his school was five away. Does that make much sense? No. What's missing from the sentence? The units. Units are really important. The number doesn't give us much information if we don't know the unit. If you go to McDonald's and they ask you for your order and you say five, what are you going to get? Maybe they'll think you want meal number five. Maybe they think you want five Big Macs. It's not going to be very predictable. Units are really important. I think what this means is that when my son was seven months old, he walked three steps, and when he was four years old, he threw his baseball eight feet and said his school was five miles away. That makes more sense, doesn't it? But units are really, really important. So I'm just going to be on you all semester about writing the units. A measurement is meaningless without units. The two most common unit systems are the English system and the metric system. In the United States, we use the English system. That's miles and feet and gallons and things like that. But the metric system is what most of the world uses, and the metric system is what scientists use. So we need to learn a metric system. Um, technically, a third system is the international system of units, or the SI system. This is based on the metric system. And from my perspective, the differences are completely inconsequential and do not matter at all. So I will refer to metric and SI as being essentially the same, but I do recognize that they are not exactly the same. But units that are important for us are length is measured in meters, mass is measured in kilograms or grams for the metric system, time in seconds, temperature in kelvins or degrees Celsius. It's very important to have a concept of how big these units are and what they measure because that can give you a lot of information and it can help you avoid some mistakes because you can look at your answer and say, is that reasonable? If you don't have any concept of how big a meter is, you're going to run into some trouble occasionally. A meter is a, a unit of length, okay? It's a unit of distance, and it's about the same size as a yard. So if you just know that a unit is about a yard, you're good. I'm not going to go into details. Um, the standard unit of mass is the kilogram. That's a picture of the standard unit. They actually have a block of metal, and they decided this is a kilogram. I'm not going to test you on that. Um, a kilogram is about two pounds, so decent amount of weight. A gram is smaller than a kilogram and is going to be um, not very much mass. So, you know, if you're concerned about your weight, if you express your weight in kilograms, you'll weigh about half as much. But that doesn't change how your clothes fit, unfortunately. The unit of time is the second, which is exactly the same in metric and English systems. Um, there's the definition of it. Uh, it's supposed to be interesting, maybe not so much. Prefixes. So, what sets the metric system apart from the English system is that instead of having a bunch of units that are related by what seem like random numbers, I mean there's two cups in a pint and two pints in a quart and four quarts in a gallon, you know, and there's 16 ounces in a pound and 12 inches in a foot and three feet in a yard, 5,280 feet in a mile. These numbers you know, they have some, there's historical reason for why they are that way, but there's all these different numbers, and they're hard to remember. The prefixes for the metric system are all factors of 10. The metric system is based on factors of 10. We need different units because if you're measuring the distance between 
um, say, Reedley and Fresno, um, what, what English unit would you use to measure the distance between Fresno and Reedley? Miles. Miles. You wouldn't want to use inches, would you? Because you would end up with a ginormous number of inches, and it wouldn't really make much sense to you. If you say 30 miles, you have an idea of how big that is. I should, I should calculate that out in inches, but it's going to be really, really big. So we need different sizes. And so in the metric system, we have grams and meters and seconds to measure length and mass and time. And instead of using a bunch of different units, we just make the unit bigger or smaller to suit our purposes, and the prefixes are what do that. So they're factors of 10. The symbols are all one letter. These are the abbreviation for the word. Now, some of these are uh, more important for us in chemistry than others. Um, kilo is a big one for us. Um, centi, milli, and micro. Those are the most important ones. Um, kilo is a lowercase k. Kilo means 10 to the third, or a 1,000. Centi is a lowercase c. Centi means 1 one-hundredth, or 10 to the minus 2. There are 100 cents in a dollar, 100 years in a century, right? So centi has to do with 100. Milli is a lowercase m. It's 1 one-thousandth, or 10 to the minus 3. Micro is another m. And we ran out of M's because we used the capital M for mega, which means a million. And so we ran out of M's, and so we turned to the Greek alphabet, and this is the Greek letter mu, lowercase mu, and that means one one millionth, or 10 to the minus 6. And so by putting one of these prefixes in front of the unit, it changes the size of the unit. So... A short chemical bond is about 1.2 times 10 to the minus 9th meters. Which prefix multiplier would you want to use? You would, you would want to use the one that means 10 to the minus 9. If we went back to the table, we would see that nano, or N, stands for 10 to the minus 9. Nano is a short shorthand, a nickname for 10 to the minus 9. I have a son named Thomas, but we don't call him Thomas. We call him Tommy. Tommy and Thomas are two different names for the same person. N and nano and 10 to the minus 9 all mean the same thing. So when we take this number, 1.2 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, we can just write the abbreviation instead of the 10 to the minus 9. So 1.2 nanometers. Nano stands, stands for 10 to the minus 9. If we have um, 5.8 times 10 to the fourth, no, that's not what I wanted to do. 5.8 kilograms. How many grams is that? Well, what does kilo mean? What does kilo stand for? 10 to the third. So instead of kilo, I wrote what it means. That's all the prefixes are doing. They're making the, the unit larger if I need to measure something big, or they make the unit smaller if I need to measure something small. Derived units are formed from other units. You could say they're derived from other units. Many of the units of volume are derived because if you take... Um, a unit of length and cubit, you get a unit of volume. So if you think about you know, a block of wood or something. 
So, you know, it's a three dimensional rectangular, it's supposed to be regular, but that's kind of regular, rectangular prism. And then you have the length, and you have the width, and you have the height. And the volume equals the length times the width times the height. If all of those dimensions are measured in centimeters, what unit do you end up with for your volume? Centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, centimeters cubed. So cubic centimeters, cubic meters, cubic millimeters are all units of volume. Those are derived because they come from a unit of length. Liters and milliliters are units that we use a lot in chemistry to also measure volume. Those are not derived units. Those are just a regular unit. Okay.